everyone. It's been so long since I did a video and I'm cruising into fall here, but realistically, it's actually December and it's almost Christmas time. And I debated whether to bother putting this out there, but I had these plans to do these fun fall videos and then it just didn't happen. It honestly just got way too crazy. There were so many things going on. My hubby and I went on vacation, which was wonderful. And we had so much bonus, beautiful weather that I was able to do so much more um, gardening stuff than I was planning on or thinking I was going to get to do. And I just feel like every year, it doesn't matter how organized I think I am, I always think of a million other things that need doing besides just like basic yard cleanup which is honestly never done um, there's so much garden work and yard work and just stuff to do on the farm and I always tease my hubby because he's all about he's an engineer so he's all about working smarter not harder and I said I'm all about working harder and dumber and slower <laughs> so that's kinda how I do things and I don't know why, just, I guess I enjoy the grind sometimes, but, yeah, I decided to put in a bunch more raised beds, um, in this orchard area. When we originally bought our property, I fenced in this huge area, and the plan was to put, like, all fruit trees in here, but the issue is, it, we get really strong west winds here, and there's no protection, really, at all from the west, like, we have trees in the back of our property, but it kind of just creates a wind funnel. Come on out. Come on. Come on out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Okay. So I'm really excited to have this additional gardening space for next year. I am planning to maybe not fill it with raised beds right away, but I'm planning to put a lot more than I already have in here. So the garlic is in that first bed, and you can see I kind of had the sheep on cleanup duty in here, which worked really well until they started going after the couple of fruit trees that I have in here. Um, Brownie is the ram that I use this year, and he is part Shetland and part CVM, and he has really awesome fleece. I'm not as excited with his conformation. I feel like it's a little bit lacking. His back end is a little skinny. You see that? His hips should be wider. Um, but I'm using him on my dairy sheep and on some of the wool sheep. Uh, the sheep definitely... It was uh, mixed results this year for um, our success with the sheep. On one hand, the dairy was amazing and it went better than I expected, even though it was a lot of work and it was hard to learn. Um, our lambing didn't go as well. We ended up losing lambs and it was later in the uh, season that we ended up losing them. And I think the main issue is they were overstocked. Um, but beyond that, you know, there's always tough losses and lessons learned and it was just a lot of work getting ready for frost. Uh, the tomatoes did awesome this year, really well. My favorite method for tomatoes is to grow them right in the chicken run and I have amazing success every year. Don't mind my system, or should I say lack of a system this year. <laughs> It was kind of a joke. Look at these cages. I mean, it was literally like coming out here to try to pick these was quite a joke. But we're on cleanup right now in this clip. So we're literally just pulling out all the cages and then any tomatoes that are big enough, even if they're green, if they, as long as they're big enough to pick, we put them in buckets and brought them inside. And then I let them ripen in the kitchen. And I think... We made like 20 gallons of sauce. Yeah. So the reason 
we can grow our tomatoes in the chicken run is because we have two separate chicken runs. So the chickens will be in the tomato beds, cleaning them all up, um, getting them ready for planting. And then when I'm getting close to planting, I will block that side off and open the door so they can come in the other run. So they essentially have a summer run and then they have a rest of the season run. So when the tomatoes are planted in this area, they can't get in here and eat tomatoes. But once we pick out all the plants and clean it all up, um, we don't pull all the plants up or anything. Um, well, some of the plants get pulled up, but basically just let the birds do the work. And you know how once in a while you stumble along uh, something that actually works. <laughs> this is one of those successes. So it works really well. We don't free range our birds typically. There might be a short season where they get to do that, but for the most part, I have found that it works best to keep them in runs because I have gardens kind of all over the property, whether flower beds or vegetable beds, and to me there's nothing more annoying than having a chicken or a rooster or duck or whatever come along and scratch up or munch on your fresh seedling. I just think I work too hard um, to have them do that. It's just pointless. I do try to regularly throughout the season throw them the weeds so that they are still getting plenty of fresh greens and we throw them worms and whatever and they find worms and bugs in the in their run so it does work really well for us and we have khaki campbell ducks and my daughter has those actually for her egg business and then the chicken eggs are mostly for ourselves <laughs> This was also a giant success this year. We planted over 400 pounds of seed potatoes with our neighbor and we honestly did not do a lot to the field. I mean we did hill them up once or twice. We could have done a much better job on hilling and we could have done a much better job on weeding um, and we could have done a better job on watering because we literally did not ever water them. And we got several thousand pounds of potatoes back. So that was really cool. I, it was really awesome to see that God blessed us and we're so thankful.